there have been reports and studies and things and the highest number of individuals who report feelings of loneliness are married men with children. So it's like, it's surprising, but it's not. Yeah. The, the last people you would think of, but then when you hear it, you're like, that kind of makes sense though. Tell me why you think it makes sense. Cause you're busy with, you know, providing for your family. You've kind of taken that whole, like, it's funny because in, in trying to provide for your family, you forget about the whole family aspect because you're so, mm. you've got that tunnel vision to work, you've got that tunnel vision to make money, to compete against the other people in your business. Then you get home and you're like, I just want to sleep. I just want to take time for me. And then it's kind of, you add that to like the stress of raising children, the stress of paying all these bills. And I could be going like, I could be wrong here, but like, this is just what I'm assuming. Um, just based on what I, I've seen, but like the stress of paying for things, the stress of raising a family, the stress of trying to move up in your job, you kind of forget about that whole touchy feely idea. Am I, am I on the right track here? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So I, what I would add to that is, um, so then we have this man who's in this, in this circumstance and having all these things, where does he go to for support? So for men, a lot of times, you know, because men are not really encouraged to seek help. Mm -hmm. And, and this is part of, you know, what I talk about a lot too, is the gender role conditioning and the impact that that has on relationships and intimacy. And if we go back and back and back to caveman times, you know, like we're going back to like evolution in DNA and men are hardwired to be the providers and protect and hunt and defend their tribe, right? They're not wired to like process emotions because that could mean death, mm -hmm. literally. Um, they, you know, and that has also, you know, compounded over time, even through evolution, because in war, uh, vulnerability means death, you know, showing a weakness means death that will get you killed, you know, so we keep moving forward. And that is still sort of hardwired. And when we look at how we continue to raise young boys, it's don't cry. You know, if you fall down and skin your knee, throw some dirt on it, get a band aid. but there's no cozy, like, oh, my baby, like, are you okay? How do you feel? You know, there's no coddling of little boys the way we caught a little girls. Mm -hmm. Right. So from a very young age, boys are conditioned to not show emotion because they don't want to be called a girl. They don't want to be made fun of on the playground by their friends or be called, you know, pejorative names. And, um, and there's this whole perception that like being, um, equated to girl like tendencies is a bad thing right and that's changing now slowly very slowly <laughs> yes and you know i think that the very young generations right now like uh, zero to uh six maybe are in a lot better position now to kind of be moved away from that but that does nothing to help generations, you know, ages older than that, because they've already been, you know, fed with all this sort of conditioning. And, and so what that ends up doing is those little boys who were told not to emotionalize and that that vulnerability is weakness and weakness equals bad grow up to be men who have a hard time emotionalizing or um, expressing what they need, you know, when they need help and really like letting that wall down. And so what happens when we find our partners is that female partner tends to become the one person. It's like, okay, I feel safe with you. I trust you. Now I can let my guard down. And so that becomes the one person that, um, that a man does feel like they can go to, but then in, you know, the longevity of the relationship, if the relationship did not start out from a truly authentic place, which is one of the other things that I coach people on, um, to be able to like build a really strong foundation, then cracks in that connection 
will start to appear over the length of the relationship. And if they're not addressed, then they start to become big gaping holes. And what ends up happening is the husband, a lot of times, will end up um, not asking anymore for the things that he wants and needs because that trust has been broken. Because the, the flip side of this general conditioning is what women have brought up to want from a partner. And that is someone who, you know, I mean, not as much. I, I'm, I'm going to make some sweeping generalizations. Yeah, right. And I know that this isn't, you know, but like, you know, you want a man who makes the money, who's, you know, um, going to take care of you. And um, not that you can't have your own career, but like generally it's sort of adopted that like typically the man should be the one who makes more money in the, in the relationship, you know, to be that provider. And it goes back to that, like caveman thing, like the man's a provider, the woman is like the home nurturer person, right? Even if both are working all that, but just basic getting down to like nuts and tacks. So brass tacks, nuts and bolts, brass tacks. That's where I was going. Um, so we get brought up watching Disney movies and seeing, you know, Disney princesses where, you know, Prince Charming comes along. And so that's the belief system that we grow up with. And then we have a lot of evolved women who say, I want a sensitive man. You know, I, I want um, someone who's not afraid to cry and, you know, da, 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 da. But this is where it gets interesting. When you get really into what it is a woman actually wants, when she says, I want a sensitive man, oftentimes what she means is, I want a man who is sensitive to my needs. That's what she's really after. But in terms of a man who is comfortable with his own sensitivity, that's harder to swallow because as the relationship goes on and now we get into we have kids and pressures become greater because we need more money. We need, you know, shared um, parental roles and duties. And oftentimes that's not the case because men are still like being pushed to work harder to be able to provide, but now moms are working too, but they're still doing most of the household stuff. So then this crack becomes wider because partners are feeling like, she's not doing enough to support me. He's not doing enough to support me, you know? So that crack grows, but also um, oh, where'd it go? It was just, it just flew right out. That happens to <laughs> me all the time. <laughs> well, I'll pause there for a second and see. <laughs> If you have questions or you want to add anything and I'll take a sip of tea. Yeah. So the one thing um, I'm, I really hope that that whole idea that men have to be providers and the uh, like have to go out and make money. I hope that changes because I personally think I'd be a killer housewife. <laughs> That's amazing. So I'm like all for it. My parents were like, what do you want to be when you grow up? I was like, housewife, man, I'd kill it. I'd clean shit. <laughs> I'll raise those kids. I'll let my wife get that bread. I don't care. I'll stay home. <laughs> See, and that's great because you know what it is you want. And now you can authentically express that when you meet someone. And then that way it's about, you know, managing expectations of the relationship too. Mm -hmm.